Hi, uh, I'm Olivier Le Villain. I work at ANSI, the French Network and Information Security Agency. And I'm going to present to you some work we did on uh, SSL and TLS uh, data sets analysis. So first, uh, just the uh, standard uh, uh, schema to, to, to figure to show you what SSL TLS is. You already know that it's a, a protocol that aims at providing uh, server authentication and optionally client authentication and uh, data confidentiality and integrity. So it's a basic block of internet security today. We are going to look specifically at the first messages of the, um, of the protocol, that is the client hello, where the client initiates the connection and, and proposes the different cryptographic uh, features and, uh, that it supports. And then the answer of the server, that is the server hello, where uh, the choices are made, which ciphers which we will use, which version, and uh, where the certificate presents itself with uh, uh, certificate chains, so with a message that is called certificate and that we will uh, look at afterwards. So there are uh, traditionally three types of methodologies. You either can do a full IPv4 uh, scan, which uh, allows you to see a lot of things. Uh, you also can do a scan based on a list of domain names, which, uh, which allows you to look at the SNI extension and uh, look at uh, virtual hosting. And if you have access to a lot of willing uh, users, you can do passive observation. So in our case, we uh, um, launched several full IPv4 scans in 2010, 11, and 14. And uh, what's interesting is that with the uh, two first methods, you can uh, choose uh, how you want to stimulate the, uh, uh, the servers. OK, so um, this was about data collection, and uh, now I'm going to talk to you about data analysis. Because the motivation for the um, concert toolkit that I'm going to present is that when we first worked on these data, we um, uh, used uh, Parsifal, a homemade parser generator, so to uh, pass the answers and the certificates, and mostly uh, undocumented and unversioned ver uh, scripts, which was cool to, 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 to publish an article. But three years later, when I wanted to uh, write my PhD manuscript, I, had, I wanted to uh, do uh, some work on more recent data. And so I had some problems with the scripts, but also with uh, criteria which had evolved. Be be because, the, for example, the notion of what was a weak suite uh, had a little evolved between 2012 and 2015. So we also wanted to include new external data sets, like the one you can get from uh, scans.io. So the, 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 the way we built Concerto is uh, uh, a way to, 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 to go back from the raw uh, data and associated metadata, like the uh, uh, client hello you, you used, if you get it, and uh, uh, automate all the process. So the process is to prepare the context. The context is injecting the stimulus you used, the client hello you used if you have it, uh, and the trust store, the certificate trust store you want to use to say which uh, host is considered to be trusted, and we used uh, NSS in, uh, in our examples. Uh, then we have to answer the, uh, to inject the answers and to pass them and to extract the certificate, to build the, the to, to pass the certificate and to build all the uh, possible uh, chains from the certificate messages and then uh, build, um, produce some, uh, some statistics. OK, just <clears throat> and to, 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 to look at the data, it's always interesting to, 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 to know that SSLTS data is not always uh, that clean. What you get from uh, uh, a measurement campaign can surprise you. And so if you, you send a client hello proposing two cipher suites, the blue one and the, red, the green one, uh, you expect to get either the blue one, the green one, or an alert, which would mean that the server doesn't understand what you uh, wanted to, to negotiate. But sometimes you find something else. Uh, sadly, this can be explained. And uh, what's even worse than the, I don't know, that the RSA, um, that the RC4 uh, MD5 is some servers are willing to negotiate the null cipher suite, which uh, the problem is, is what does it mean? Because it's not specified. Uh, we also had a case where our passwords would choke on uh, is a server hello missing two bytes. That is, if you look at the message, it's just a good message, but you have two missing bytes, which might make you uh, look at your password and think, is it me or is it the message that's incorrect? So that's why the parsing phase, phase inter interesting, and uh, we, were, uh, uh, we, we now are confident that our 
uh, tool using Parsifal is robust. And uh, the other thing that we find interesting in this phase is uh, to keep the, the, the metadata and in particular the use stimulus to know which, uh, w w when you encounter inconsistencies. Okay, so just f uh, first simple results about what we can get. So this is about data uh, coming from our um, campaigns, 2011, 2014, and uh, the other three ones, so the uh, full IPv4 for, from 2015 is from scans.io, and uh, the two regarding Tapalex and one million is all, are also from uh, um, scans.io. So you can see that uh, TLS 1.2 is getting uh, some attention and uh, is, is uh, finally being deployed. Uh, just don't forget that it was a specification uh, that was published in 2008. So we, we could have better results, but at least it's, it's starting to, 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 to be used. Uh, and now I'm going to speak uh, mostly about certificates. So I told you that the, the, when the server answers, he presents a certificate message that contains uh, the list of certificates. It should be in order, that is, first the certificate of the server, and then each uh, certificate authority that will sign the previous certificate. In reality, you will find unordered messages. Uh, you will have find uh, repeated certificates. We, we, you will also uh, have useless certificates and sometimes missing certificates, what the EFF called the transvalid uh, chains in their, in their first uh, um, publication in 2010 or 11. Okay, what's interesting is that TLS 1.3 relaxes this uh, constraint on the order, which is a good thing because if you look at the uh, uh, quality of certificate chain, you see that less and less uh, uh, chains, uh, certificate messages are in fact uh, RFC compliant because they are not necessarily un uh, ordered for various reasons. Uh, so, okay, so that was just another result con concerning certificates. Here is another thing you, you, you can get with Concerto. Uh, it's uh, an example of a uh, certificate message that is not trivial. Uh, I will explain first w what each stuff is. Gray boxes are what certificates were sent by the server. So the server sent all these certificates, and in particular, it's, this one is the server certificate. And we also have three, uh, we also consider three certificate as trust routes. So these the, the, this one, were, uh, we consider them as trust routes. And um, what Concerto gives you is that it can build a lot of uh, possible um, certificate chains. So this one is a good one and is essentially the, the, the better one you can get. But it's interesting to, to see that in this case, you have a lot of certificates that have nothing to do with the server certificate. So you can find stuff very um, uh, uh, diverse in the, the, the certificate messages that are sent. Um, to, build all the to build all the possible uh, certificate chains possible, uh, in fact, you, it, it's a little complex to do that because you have two, 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 two um, problems that will um, lead to um, combinatorial explosion. Uh, the first one is X509 V1 certificates because uh, as they, ha they do not have any extensions, you don't know if they are certificate authorities and un up until recently, they could be considered as uh, certificate authorities. So if you have, uh, let's say, uh, an appl appliances that all uh, generate the same certificate, same subject, same issuer, but they just differ with the uh, public key, you should, in practice, try all the possible uh, combinations if you want to be exhaustive. And in fact, all the uh, signature will fail, uh, signature checks will fail. So for this reason, uh, we didn't want to uh, look into X509 and V1 uh, certificates too much. So we uh, only considered uh, them as certificate authorities when they were in our trust uh, store, which is what browsers do. Uh, the other thing is crazy cross-certification. Uh, that is, you have a lot of um, certificate authorities that do cross-certification, and sometimes you have mutual uh, cross-certification, which would lead to cycles, which is not a problem per se. But what, when you add the fact that some uh, authorities will uh, emit multiple, multiple uh, certificates with the same public key, same subject, but with different uh, validity, validity dates, 
you can have a lot of possibilities to choose from when you, can, when you want to build all the uh, possible uh, certificate chains. So there was different possibilities, but we chose to limit the number of uh, certificates we took uh, outside of the uh, certificate message when trying to build all the uh, certificate chains. <clears throat> uh, I have uh, still some figures about uh, certificates. I will not speak about all of them, but this one is, is interesting. It was uh, in the uh, EFF data from 2010. Some uh, server would send you uh, a very, very large certificate message, including all its uh, certificate trust store, apparently. Uh, and uh, this is to answer some questions we had uh, on Wednesday about um, the uh, use, today's use in, of uh, MD5 and uh, X509 V1. So I ran some, uh, I computed some uh, stuff with Concerto uh, yesterday on top of X1 million uh, re recent scan from scans.io. So we still have a lot of SHA-1 uh, certificates. We also have uh, several MD5 certificates. And this is interesting also. We have back from the future some X509 V4 certificates. Okay. Okay, this uh, is about server behavior. In our uh, campaigns, we, had, uh, we used uh, multiple stimuli. That is, we probed the same server uh, with different uh, stimuli, which allows us to, to grasp something into the server behavior, which allows us to, to look at the interference on the full IPv4 um, uh, space, and also afterwards to look at uh, the SSLv2 support, which led us to uh, compute um, a lower bar uh, con concerning the drowned vulnerability because we had 40, 40 per, per percent of all HTTP servers, HTTPS servers in our campaign from 2014 that would answer with the same cer certificate to uh, SSLv2 uh, client hello. <clears throat> okay, uh, this is just a uh, way to say that uh, Concerto is today is mostly stupid. It's just a bunch of CSV tables. Uh, and the, the, the real smart parts are in the parsers and in the uh, way we build the, um, the certificate chains. And so we, we, we would like to, to, to improve uh, some of the stuff, like the backends, more reports, re reporting tools, and include all the uh, data, the, data sources like certificate transparency, for example. Okay, in conclusion, uh, if we want to analyze SLTLS data, uh, we believe that it's important to have good quality data, which I believe we, we, we have today, or, and we can reproduce easily today with the tools at hand. And we should use methodologies to uh, uh, allow for reproducible analysis. And that's where we uh, try to, 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 uh, to propose something with Concerto. Uh, the document, the, uh, cuts to the, the source code is online in GitHub. Uh, there is a little documentation. And don't hesitate to, to, to send me a mail if you are interested in please. Thank you for your attention. We have time for uh, one question. Should be better than zero questions. Excellent. <laughs> oh, now you got a race. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, on the SSLv2 slide, um, I know there's a lot of clients out there who will advertise, will send an SSLv2 formatted client hello, even though they don't support SSLv2. They actually want to negotiate SSLv3. Um, the servers here were they? Is the statistic here that they were accepting those formatted SSLv2 client hellos and negotiating up something better, or are they actually negotiating SSLv2? Uh, we had two. We had two stimuli uh, with SSLv2. One with was just the way to engage the conversation, and which would eventually lead to SLV3 or TLS, and one which was pure SLV2. And we looked, when I say 40%, uh, that was uh, servers that were uh, uh, accepting to, um, yes, they were accepting and answering with an SSLV2 server hell. So uh, we didn't lead the handshake to, the, to its end, because we only looked at the first server flight, but yes, it was uh, a real server hell. All right, fantastic. One more thing for the VA again. Thank you.